All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to reframe your 360 spherical video that you've shot on a GoPro Max using DaVinci Resolve. Now, you will need the studio version of Resolve because you will be using the Fusion module. And also, first, you'll export out your footage using GoPro Max Exporter. So you will just import your footage into GoPro Max Exporter, and I recommend changing the codec to Cineform, which will give you as close to a lossless video as you can, and make sure the resolution is at 5.6K. Alright, so let's go into the Fusion module and project that 3D spherical video onto a 3D sphere. So let's add Tool, 3D, Shape, 3D. I'm going to go into the Inspector here and change the shape to a sphere. Now, the base subdivision starts off at 20. I don't think that's smooth enough. Let's go with, I think 32 would be a good minimum, but I'm going to go with 128. If your computer is a little slower, you might want to maybe go with 64, so that that uh, sphere can be as smooth as you uh, can get it. Okay, so now let's also create a 3D camera. So create, add, or add tool, 3D, camera, 3D. Okay, so now let's go and add a... 3D merge or merge 3D. Let's add, let's go ahead and put the shape into there and the camera into there as well. And now let's take the media that we imported from, you know, on the timeline, let's map that to the shape. And now let's add tool 3D, renderer 3D. So let's find it, renderer 3D. There it is. And let's uh, take the information out of merge and go into the renderer 3D and finally we'll take renderer 3D into media out and now you can see on renderer 3D if I go to the if I go to the edit page you can see that the aspect ratio is off that's because if I go back into fusion and I select my renderer 3D node you can see that let's turn off auto resolution and let's fix this aspect ratio to like 16 by 9 3840 by 2160 and you can see when we go back into the edit, pa edit page everything is fixed there all right so let's work with this a little bit more I'm going to select these two right here and we're going to view these on the, uh, the first uh, viewer here first of all I don't like this very linear look so let's go into the camera first and change our angle of view Let's widen our perspective a little bit. Let's lower the focal length. So we're increasing our angle of view and lowering our focal length. But notice something. As I select my sphere and I rotate it around, so if I go ahead and rotate that around, you can see that it is a very linear view. And also notice how the truck, this was actually recorded on the other side of the truck. And unfortunately, uh, it's all mirrored over. So uh, I'm probably going to take my radius of my sphere and bring it down to negative one, and then take my camera and uh, rotate it 180 degrees. So negative 180 in the x-axis, and that gives me more of a correct uh, perspective here for for my camera. So now, if I take my sphere. You can see, notice how the perspective, notice how the distortion is happening here. It's very linear. So there, there really isn't any distortion. And, and you might like that, and that's fine. Now, what if you don't want this exact straight lines? What if you want more of that, that reframe look that you see with the GoPro app? Well, I think the best method of doing that is to take the camera itself and to translate it, move it outward. So we'll go and move it outward just a little bit and then compensate by changing the angle of view a little bit or bringing it down, bringing the angle of view down. And now as we rotate our, I'm just going to go into the shape node itself. So as we rotate our sphere, you can see we now have more of that, that, you know, the look that is more of. more with a perspective distortion looks a bit more like a GoPro or that you know wide angle fisheye look and I like that so what you'd probably do is just position the camera you'd animate the camera animate the angle of view and also position the the sphere in such a way that 
uh, you get what you like. So we'll just start off by getting this to a position that I like. Maybe I like that angle right there to start off with, to start the shot off with. You can use either the viewer or you can use the sliders here. All right, so let's say that, let's say that I really like this particular angle. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and right click and animate the rotate group. And now, we're going to move forward a little bit, let that play. So let's say it, it's played for a couple seconds. Now we're going to lock that down. We're going to animate the set key on rotate group. And now let's rotate downwards a little bit. So let's go on ahead and maybe just play with this right here. So you're just going to be rotating the various axi axes of the sphere itself. The reason why we're not animating the camera, which you would think you'd want to use the camera, but I had to move the camera backwards in order to uh, control that fisheye effect. So it's just something to be aware of. All right, so let's also right click and just to be sure, let's set a key on rotate group. It's probably already done it, but I don't know for sure. So let's let that play a little bit and let's lock that in, get, lock that in again. So set key on rotate group. Let's rotate the sphere. So let's rotate it like this. And what I'm also thinking about doing is rotating it downward too. So if I can grab the right axis, let's bring this down like that. And then let's rotate this like this. It's of course more difficult to use uh, to do it like this than say it would be in the GoPro app or another program, but you have a very uh, interesting level of control here, including with that, the way you would control the perspective distortion. So it does work, it's just a little bit uh, challenging to get it to be just right. There we go. And now I'm going to affect that perspective distortion. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So let's go ahead and set a key here. Let's set a key on rotate group. And I'm gonna go back to the camera itself. Now, before we do that, let's look at our shape node here. You can see that all of our keys are really uh, awkward. So we're just, they're, they're, they're kind of rough. They're very linear. So I'm gonna press F to make these flat. You can also right click the keys and you can uh, uh, change the interpolation here and you can see the hot keys for that. So at the very end, I might want to move these. I'm going to hold down shift and move them like this. And I'm going to move the uh, bezier handles to make it a bit more smoother. So maybe that's what I want. Of course, you can play with these and get the look you're going for. Okay, so if I were to go like this, you can see. Now I'm going to do some interesting. Uh, we're going to we're going to change the perspective. So let's first start here. I'm gonna to go to the camera and we're going to lock a key on the angle of view. So we're gonna animate that. Okay, we're going to lock the key again. So set key on the angle of view. And then when we get to this keyframe here on the shape on the rotation I want that angle of view to have been zoomed in a little bit so we're gonna zoom in a little bit and we're gonna uh, just to be sure we're going to set a key okay so let's go back to the shape so we kept that for a while until about we're gonna we're gonna uh, go back to the camera here and set a key and then once we get over here We're going to try something. I'm going to go right here. I'm going to set a key on the camera itself. So we're going to set a key on angle of view. And we're also going to set a key on the translation. Because I would like to get that linear view again. So let's go over here. 
and by the time we get here we can key this translation back to zero and set a key so you can see that over here we will have this at negative 0 0.58 or negative negative 0.58 was where it was at so we will set a key there and now over here we've zoomed in a little bit and over here it's back to normal so I, I kinda made a mistake there but I fixed it anyway now we also might want to change the angle of view again over here so let's go to the camera settings and change the angle of view to something more like this and you can see it's more of a linear view now so it's it's more of a linear look so we've changed the perspective distortion we've made all the lines straight see how the line here is curved that guardrail there on the road is curved and then as we come over here we've now made everything straight uh, we can also of course press F on these keys and clean them up a little bit make them a bit more smooth and now that is uh, somewhat of a basic way of uh, manipulating your uh, 360 footage shot on a GoPro Max or any other 360 camera so now let's go into the color tab and I'm just gonna add a few nodes so I'm just gonna keep it real simple we're gonna add one we're gonna do a we're gonna uh, let's see what our this is a shot with uh, native white balance on the GoPro Max so uh, I'm just gonna add a little bit of gain I'm not gonna do any color correction here we're just gonna add a little bit of gain so let's go to our gain knob let's add it up keeping it nice and simple and we might want to adjust our temperature a little bit as well but that's really it I'm just keeping it simple this is not a color correction tutorial or anything just just making the video look a little bit better let's also add a little bit of sharpening so I'm gonna go over here add a new node we're gonna bring the sharpening down to about maybe 47 because I did shoot with sharpening at low in the camera so I can control it in post without sharpening it looks like that and with sharpening we've just We'll go down to about 45. So that actually looks pretty good. It's not perfectly straight though. Let's clean up that rotation a little bit. So we will find the object itself. So you go to shape and you find one of the last rotations. So let's go into rotation. There it is. And let's clean this up a little bit. So we can just move these keys up if you want. Oh, I don't want to add another key. We'll just clean this up. Maybe something like this. And then we might want to rotate this up a little bit to make it look uh, composed better. So maybe something like that. And now, when we look at the composition, we start off in the beginning, we're here. And then we move on to this perspective. And then we lock in that perspective right there for a little bit. And then we go over here, we start rotating around. And we get to this perspective. So let's add a, f a few more things to this. Now, as you can see, when we are rotating here, because of all those subdivisions in the sphere, let's say I would have not had so many subdivisions in the sphere. So take a look at this. Let's go to the sphere again. And let's change the subdivision count to the default of 20. You can see that 
the sphere looks it just there's artifacts and we can also see because we're trying to map a, a 2d object onto these or uh, we're trying to map a 2d video onto these faces of the sphere and the sphere is just not detailed enough so let's bring that sphere back to 128 and that looks much better okay so finally we're gonna add two more effects that I think are pretty interesting so let's add a camera shake so we're gonna add a tool we're gonna add transform camera shake and we'll just go with the default settings this will be after the renderer Now I think the default settings are a little bit too much uh, the GoPro Max is extremely stable uh, the stabilization is amazing with the hyper smooth and all that. GoPro's a uh, very good stabilization, electronic stabilization in camera. So I want to add a little bit of motion blur, or not motion blur, but uh, camera shake. So I'm going to set this to 0.3. And I think that's pretty good. And also, as for motion blur, of course I want to add some motion blur because we can't really use it. Because we can't use ND filters on this camera yet. And even if I could, I don't like ND filters being used on a camera using electronic stabilization because it bakes in all of those electronic adjustments into the motion blur and it looks horrible. So let's add a node and we're going to go to the motion blur. We're going to set it to better. And I'll just set it to maybe 35. And it will help simulate the 180 degree shutter angle. Not perfectly, but it will give me more of that, uh, that, that, that look that cinematic look. So let's render this out and see how it looks.